With the fourth stop on our Academic Museum Spotlight Tour, we visited the University of Denver's beautiful Vicki Myron Gallery, where we got to experience a fascinating exhibition entitled The Whole is Equal by artist Annabeth Rosen and had a great conversation with gallery director Dan Jacobs and a few of his esteemed colleagues and collaborators. A good example that comes up pretty often is the question of, of censorship. I have not experienced any kind of external pressure or protest about the, the kind of art that we, we show here. I think there's an understanding and an appreciation that when you walk into a university-based gallery or museum that you may be challenged. Um, and I think it's very interesting because I think some of the same people who might be offended or challenged a little bit too much by certain material in another context find it perfectly acceptable, interesting, and stimulating in a university setting. Somehow people understand that this is a place for dialogue and discussion and to, and to be intellectually and emotionally challenged. I mentioned earlier that, uh, that we have an art study center. Uh, this is one of the things that I took on when I came here is to evaluate what we have. Uh, in terms of the accumulated art collections. There was never a, a really organized university art collection. So we now have over 3,300 cataloged artworks, plus over 19,000 cataloged uh, photographic negatives that are fully available online. Uh, they're a major asset that's now available to the um, research and student community. It can be accessed physically by appointment, uh, so it's a historical undertaking that has encompassed exhibitions, publications, cataloging, uh, rehousing of collections. So we're really trying to consolidate the components of that 150 year legacy and turn that into something that will continue to grow for the future. So going into the collections area has been very, very rewarding. It's provided lots of opportunities for students as researchers and as aspiring professionals. And that's just been a very important piece of what we're doing in addition to the work of the, the gallery here, which has more of a contemporary focus. This operation is completely staffed by students, most of whom are studying art history. Many of them are graduate students on the art history slash museum studies track. And so my staff now has grown from the time I started, grown from two half-time GTAs, graduate teaching assistant. It's now grown to over 16 students. So this is a, a terrific hands-on training opportunity for them. My graduate students who are studying art history, but many of them are planning to go into the museum world. So having the gallery here has been really important experience for them to be able to see the day-to-day, -day, how do professionals figure out what to put in the gallery, which things to include and which not to include in a given exhibit. Thinking about the audience of the local community and the university community both. So we have some classes that are directly connected to the gallery and one of them is a research practicum that I teach. My students come in, they study, at the moment they're studying artists from Colorado who are women from the 19th century and the early 20th century. And they do all this research to try and understand who these women were and what was the art world like in Colorado and Denver at that time. And then we'll put on an exhibition that the students will co-curate and that will be exhibited in the spring so that they can make public all this new knowledge that they're creating. People can come in, they can see the work, they can see what the students' interpretations are and get an experience of a whole art world that was here before us. I try to put the students front and center and demonstrate uh, how they're evolving professionals in the museum field. The response from the wider university community is very, very positive. They appreciate that what we're doing is involving students in every phase of this operation. The gallery for the students, majors and non-majors alike, becomes the point where they can share ideas. So we have shows that come in that get people talking about what they're, they're studying elsewhere on campus too. Last year, uh, we had an exhibition with two photojournalists, Abbas Haji Mohammadi, 
and uh, David Burnett, an Iranian and American photojournalist, two different generations. We uh, jointly sponsored a panel discussion with the Center for Middle East uh, Studies and the Center for Conflict Resolution, which are both part of the School of International Studies. Great turnout, fabulous response. The sense was that we were bringing together people with shared interests from multiple departments around campus, but that who maybe didn't have exactly this kind of forum, this opportunity to get together and, dis and discuss matters uh, with the unique perspective of visual artists and working photojournalists to really leaven that discussion with new information and new perspectives. I think that it becomes really exciting that they know that the gallery is part, will be part of their education and it's part of their community that they're entering. You don't come to um, a major uh, college or university just to study one thing. You really come to develop your greater appreciation and critical faculties across the board. It goes back to the, the basic concept of liberal arts education, which is that the student should be exposed to multiple disciplines in science, in art, um, in business, in technology, and across the board to develop themselves as complete people and for them to explore the things that turn them on because the reality is that most people don't have that gift of knowing what their passion is from age 10 and just going forward and running with it for their whole lives. And increasingly, the, the fact that people will change careers 10 to 12 times, that's what we project for our current students. So having a diverse skill set, diverse interests, diverse passions um, is going to be a very important survival skill for them going forward. The Annabeth Rosen uh, project's a great example of how, of how we can bring our students into direct contact with living artists. Um, and that's a role that I only see expanding in the future. Um, because ceramic art in particular really calls up this very visceral sense of connecting and very basic to human experience. Annabeth expressed it several times in terms of that sheer exhilaration of working and developing an idea. It may exist in the realm of ideas, but it's also completely connected in a bodily sense. In this world, there are a lot of people who live in a world of, of hard labor and extremely difficult circumstances. And I think understanding something about the act of physical work and the act of physical creation can only help in developing some kind of empathy along that dimension. I'm angling for ways to create a second exhibition space somehow so that we can have a smaller sort of black box experimental uh, program going and more opportunities for students to show their work. Right now they show um, in the gallery once a year, graduating seniors. So we're gonna continue building on a contemporary focus as well. And that's the natural thing within the School of Art and Art History.